All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go to this really good email that was sent from a subscriber. And this story, guys, unlike most of my stories that are sent in by guys, this story is actually sent in by one of my female subscribers. And she's going to share her, her story here, how she came this close to completely destroying her marriage to what was a really great guy, great family, because of modern ephemism. How she be how literally... It was almost destroyed, but fortunately, she got her act together and saw where she went wrong, found my channel, other channels like mine, and was able to salvage things, and her husband also gave her another chance. That being said, you're going to see in this story how she really has the life, has and had the life. Her husband is a old school alpha male. He started his own company, very wealthy. He is take charge, no nonsense, old school guy. And you'll see how they met, got together, his terms that he laid, how he handles her. You're going to see that they eventually had four children together. And again, you're also going to see what happens when, uh, as I tell you, be careful who your girl hangs out with, friends or family, and the influence it can have on her. Because you're going to see here, again, this close to ruining her marriage. And she writes a story to share what happened, obviously, is to hopefully other people will learn from her mistake and not make it and all that. And amongst other things, the uh, entertainment factor. Now, as you can see, it's a long one, but, uh, you know, I know you guys like the long stories. And, well, if you ever heard a girl tell a story, you know they tend to ramble a tad, so don't be surprised there, but it's good. And I think you guys will definitely enjoy it, and I'll definitely add my two cents along the way, pointing out little things that I talk about, you know, in all my stories to help you gentlemen out. So, it starts off, she says here, uh, Dear SSM, I love your channel, and I've listened to every episode you've ever made, including the ones you tried doing without your sunglasses and even in your home. Yep, the good old days. Uh, hearing about the 54-year-old female who wrote to you about her regrets encouraged me to write my story. My story has a similar start, but with a much different ending. Your channel came to me when I needed it the most, which greatly improved my marriage and my husband. I'm glad to hear that. I know this is not the relationship channel, However, I truly believe a lot of the stories and lessons each story gives can greatly help men and women improve their relationships. Just to warn you, this will probably be a very long story. Feel free to skip parts if you feel needed. Also, English is not my first language, and I ramble sometimes. Really? Well, I'm 45. I've dated and been in relationships with a lot of gals. I know you all ramble, so this is nothing new to me. But don't worry. I'll make use of your rambling to... Uh, point out some important things. Uh, when I first wrote this, this was over 20 pages, I greatly cut it down. And she breaks this down almost like a story, different parts, which is helpful. Part one, she says, I love at first sight. We will start from what got me so clung to my husband. I got hired as a temporary worker as an accountant to assist me in paying for school, majoring in accounting. At this time, I was 22 years old and close to finishing school. The guy that hired me didn't even check my skills. To this day, I think he hired me just to try to get me in, the, in my pants. Probably. Uh, now to be fair, I do think I am very blessed in the looks department. I use this to my advantage. Hey, you know what, guys? At least you can admit this. We're keeping it real here. Men had trouble looking into my eyes. They looked at my chest a lot. Just to give you an idea, I'm 5'4", 130-ish, with double D cup size and good curves and a cute face. Men would simp hard, and I could usually get whatever I wanted. Again, she's admitting this, given the, given the uh, inside information here, so this is helpful. Uh, most men just seem to just seem honored to be in my presence. Okay, let's not get a little arrogant, honey. At first, this would greatly amuse me, but after a while, this bothered me, and then men annoyed me. Translation, she's young, she's beautiful, in her prime, and guys are chasing after her, kissing her butt, and all that, and obviously she lost respect for them. Right here. She didn't say it in those words, but that's my interpretation, and it's, it's the truth. She says, in my first week at work, I was going through the standard training. So we were doing a tour of the facility and being introduced to everyone. The owner was present, so I got to meet him. When my manager introduced me to him, I had the wind knocked out of me as soon as I saw him. Uh, he was very good looking, but not overly attractive. Hang on. He was good looking, but not overly attractive. Well, okay, I get your point. 
but he had this presence I have never felt from anyone before. You could tell he worked out and looked like he had the sixes. At this time, I was not aware of the sixes or simping, but looking back, I can see it. He just looked at me for half a second, said hi, and walked away. No handshake, no look at my chest, just walked away. And didn't even give me a second look. The nerve of him. This is an alpha male, guys. She was attracted not only his looks, but his presence, as she described it. And he didn't give her the second look, then stare at her chest or her ass. It's just another chick to him. He's the boss. This is an employee. And to no surprise, this caught her attention, attracted her. I went from speechless from love at first sight to speechless from being insulted. <clears throat> this really upset me. This has never happened. Oh, the nerve of him not trying to kiss your ass and flirt with you and get your number. The nerve. Well, watch how offended she is going to chasing after him. Uh, a week later, I was still very annoyed by this. He was walking to leave the building. I wanted to intercept him before he left. So I walked over to him and said, hello, I'm new. I believe I met you the other day, but I didn't catch your name. I had my hand extended to shake his hand. He looked me in the eyes, returned my hand and said, Mike, sorry, but I have to go. He walked away again, barely looked at me, and I didn't even ask my name. This drove me insane. My young body and sex appeal was nothing to him. How dare he? Guess what? He's got other, much more important things on his mind, like running his company, and probably other girls are chasing after him, than just another girl. But this shocks her, and I'm really making a point of this, guys, to help you relationship and dating guys understand this. When you're not chasing after, it makes him freaking crazy, but in a good way. Uh, a little while later, it started to make more sense. A lot of women that worked there were trying to flirt and make small passes on him. I really think he was really, I really think he was uh, really annoyed by all these women. Some of these women were gorgeous, like nines and tens. I would give myself a seven or eight-ish. He was unfazed by them. He never flirts back, never checks them out, just business. Yes, because this is his company. It is all business. End of freaking story. Why potentially jeopardize what you've built and provide you a hell of a nice life for some piece of ass? That's very smart of him. Uh, as a few weeks passed, my crush turned into burning desire. I had never had in my life. I still never wanted anything so badly. I watched the other women try to show cleavage, be as sexy as possible to no effect. So I would have to take a different approach. And then the words of my grandmother, one of the smartest people I know, came to mind. She advised me to do the following things in regards to marriage and sex. Number one, a good wife will keep her husband with food and sex. Number two, a great wife will be irreplaceable asset and the assistance of helping him build wealth and prosperity. Okay, there you go. Wise words of grandma. But let's not, let's not forget the food and sex. That's very important too. I knew what I needed to do. See right here, guys. Let's, let's quick intermission here. She's hot for this guy because he's not chasing after her. And it certainly helps that he's the owner of the business. Let's be honest as well. And listen to the plotting and scheming to get this guy's attention. Women don't do this for guys that kiss their ass. They do it for the guys that they see as a prize and aren't giving them the attention. I know what I had to do. I had to somehow go from temp worker to, to an asset to his business. I need to find a way to build and grow the business. That sleazy manager that hired me that was trying to sleep with one of, one of some of the co-workers or the workers, he rubbed me the wrong way. Not just because he was trying to hook up, but because he talked about all his money. I just didn't believe it. This was around the time the tech bubble popped. I uh, just couldn't not I just could not see how he could be making so much money. So I thought I would take a look into contracts and other business expenses. And he said she says now part 2 me getting noticed. So for the next 3 months I gathered as much data as I could and re and reviewed my off time at home. It was my job at the office to view, view contracts, billings, checking for errors, etc. For the first month, I could find nothing. Everything looked in order with a few errors and corrections needed, but I found no evidence of fraud or anything close to it. I even went back three years and could still find nothing. However, about two months into the hunt, I noticed my manager was burning important financial documents that I did not have access to, to a, to a CD. Okay, not, not burning in, in a trash can, like burning them to a CD. Gotcha. This is right before USB drives got big. He was doing this on his personal laptop. 
I thought that kind of looked suspicious. When I saw this, I started to talk to him with some flirting to see if he, where he placed his CDs of stored data. It was my hope that he, as he flirted with me, he would just place the CD into the spot, he keeps his stored data, and think nothing of it. That is exactly what happened. I can see where this is going. I stayed late and waited for him to leave. I took all the CDs home with me, copied all the data, and returned the next day. He never noticed a thing. It was going to take me weeks to go over everything I copied. The cliff notes of what I found is that my manager and two other employees stole around $200,000 last year. Going back for about six years, the total amount was $900,000. Well, you're about to prove yourself a variable asset to the company and the boss that you're in love with. It could be more, it could be more but that was all I could find. It took about a week to complete my report and get it ready. When I saw Mike, the next day, I walked into his office and he looked very annoyed. I told him that I have something very urgent to tell him. He told me to follow the chain of command and take it up with the manager. Mike, Mike and the crappy manager are close friends and Mike did not like that I was jumping the chain. I thought this might happen, so I handed him a note card that said, Employees are stealing close to a million dollars. I have evidence on who and how much. I will only speak to you about it. Before I got to the door, he said, shut the door and have a seat. That'll get his attention. I walked him through step by step on how they are skimming and everything they were doing, what accounts the extra money was going to, etc. This is pretty impressive for an accounting student. Short story of this creep short story of this creepy manager and two co-workers, they're arrested. Mike was so grateful he gave me a ten thousand dollar bonus uh, for my off the clock work. He made me a permanent worker and a new position for me. Over the next few months, I was pretty much Mike's chief accountant advisor. I freely discussed cost-effective measures we could take to greatly save money and maximize profits. Mike was starting to see me as a major asset that could assist him in growing his business. I was not an amazing accountant that, that, knew, every, that knew everything. It was just that I was in love with Mike, which made me work off the clock and motivated me to improve the business. Well, a good business owner is always going to appreciate people that can uh, legally and honestly help him not only grow his business, but manage it better, save him money, cut costs, etc., etc. So yes, you guys' attention. Part three, the courtship. And I know this is long, guys, but this is, this is interesting, and you're going to see where this goes at the end. Part three, the courtship. Over the next few months, me and Mike worked very closely together. I flirted heavily when we were alone. He was uh, much warmer to me when we first met, but kept me at a distance. I did not know if he liked me, but since I worked for him, kept me at arm's length, or just he did not see me that way. I know he would always pick his grind over me. I did not want to work this hard for him if I could not be with him. So I could crush my heart now and get over it, or I could, I could have him. So I would make my move. Keep in mind, this is only this is the only time I've ever chased a guy. I'm always the one being chased. You hear that? This beautiful young girl, 22 years old, 23 in her prime, always being the one chased. But the guys that don't chase her and who she perceives as a prize, she chases after that. Does this not sound familiar? So remember, you guys, if you guys that do dating relationships, focus on yourself. Focus on your grind. Don't go chasing after the girls. Believe me. They see you as a prize. They'll chase after you. And the leverage will be, the ball will be in your, you will have the leverage. As is this guy. And believe me, when they see a guy as a prize, they'll do anything. Right here. To get his attention and get in the favor. But you have to be careful. For very obvious reasons. Uh, It goes on here. After going over the finances, we finished early. I confessed how I felt and even told him that I loved him. He looked at me and said, the age gap doesn't bother you. At this time, I'm 22 years old and he is 36. I told him it doesn't matter. He then told me that if we were to date, I would have to resign my position. There you go. He's not going to have his company jeopardized if anything goes wrong. Very smart. I would have done the same thing. My jaw hit the floor. I was so angry. I I worked this hard for him devoting myself and demands I quit. Uh, let's be honest here. You did this to get close to him. Come on here. We, we all heard it. Okay. You worked hard and you earned that uh, raise and you earned that uh, permanent position. But this deep down was to get to him. L- let's be honest here. 
Uh, he placed his fingers over my lips, silenced me, and said, I can't date my employees at the office. I'm willing to hire you back under a different title with same pay and responsibilities, but you have to work at home and can never come to the office. A few days later, he made me sit with, my, with a lawyer signing papers for the new job, and the lawyer drafted a document stating that Mike is not sexually harassing me. Man, this guy's doing this long before the current times and what goes on. Mike won't tell me much, but I guess in the past he was accused by a female employee of S-word harassment, and that is why he doesn't like to be one-on-one -on -one with females and tries to avoid them at all costs. There you go. This guy is a trailblazer for what we have today. His lawyer made it clear to him, since his, his worth is in the millions, that it puts him at risk for those types of accusations. When I first started dating, it was a little weird for the first month or two. It was hard to go from working together to being lovers. After we got it figured out, I knew he was the one. He made it clear to me that he would never get married. That bothered me a lot. I told him how much I wanted a family and children. He told me one of, the, one of my favorite things to hear. And he says, take a seat. Which now means on his lap. He explained that he can't legally marry because it puts his business at risk and he would never sign a contract where he'd give a big portion of his business and put it at risk. Very smart. I like this guy. I told you guys there's a lot to learn from this story here. He explained that we could have a wedding, wedding rings, that we can have a modest ceremony, we can tell everyone we are married and not disclose that it's not a government binding contract. I could take his last name. Pretty much, we can act like we were married in every way beside filing taxes separately and the government paper not included. Okay. Rings, uh, ceremony, last name, all that, just legally government involved because he has too much to risk with his company that he obviously started from the ground up, busted his ass to build, and all his wealth. I don't blame him at all. At all. This is not what I really wanted. Shocker. I don't know why, but it didn't seem like a real marriage. It is a real marriage. It's just not on paper. Was the government paper not worth that much? I thought it over the next few days and knew this was the best offer I was going to get. To get. I knew if I said marriage or nothing, I would go from taking a seat to, or, or to being walked out the door. We got married after 18 months of dating, and I know a smack is coming. Yeah, except I don't smack women, but too soon. But then again, you weren't legally with the government papers married. You were in a commitment, you know. He says, so we had our wedding. I don't care what anybody says. After being married over 20 years, Mike is my husband and I don't need a piece of paper to prove it. I really feel like we are actually married. There you go. And as I know this story goes, you have a great marriage until you almost fucked it all up. We'll come to that soon. Part four, the contract. Now listen to this guy's terms. I mean, this guy is should be a hero to all you guys. He says, Mike told me he wants to have a family with me, but part of it will be treated like a business. So we made a marriage contract, and here's the highlights. Marriage contract. How many guys out there have the balls to tell their lady, we're going to have a marriage contract and, and with things written down and everything? Right here. Number one. I still get to work for my husband business, husband's business, but as a financial consultant. I'd be paid a monthly salary. I honestly didn't get paid much, but it's money for myself. I don't pay for any expenses. The money I get is for me. I also get benefits and the legal limit for an employer to contribute to a 401k and Roth IRA. Number two, based on what happens in our marriage, I would get paid what can be considered to be a severance package. If he cheats on me and I end the relationship, I will get a 10-year severance. If I cheat, I get three months. If anyone walks away for non-cheating reasons, I get two years. Number three, open slash phone, email. Okay, open all phone, email, social media, and financial policy. All methods of communication is open to review by either party anytime and without notice. All passwords are written down in a stored book. Any communication platform that is not disclosed now or on creation is considered cheating. Any passwords that are changed without being disclosed is cheating. The same applies to credit cards and banking accounts. We have it that we can view but not change anything on financials. This will be changed in 2020. Wow. Now, she says your social media. There wasn't social media in the early 2000s. I mean, at least the very early 2000s. But obviously, when social media came into the thing, then obviously that was applied to this rule. 
The contract is very long, but that is the main details to know. So far, we've never had to address these issues, and I hope we never do. We'll accept that one time. Part five, the setup to part six. She says here, now we're getting to the good stuff. I want to explain our relationship. It was amazing. Friends and family asked how we had such a great marriage. I'll tell you how, because you are with a real alpha male who lays down the law. He has a take it or leave it attitude, and you're completely turned on by that. And it's a great marriage for him that you go along with this and doesn't help doesn't hurt that you're damn good looking and you're feminine and all that. Works out pretty well. Uh, we had four children. I wanted more, but Mike said no and went as far to get a vasectomy. Hold on here. You have four children and congratulations on your family. And four wasn't enough? You wanted more kids? Good Lord, honey. Uh, even with four children, we would have SEX almost every day. And it was not uncommon to go twice a day. Jesus, you're a little hornball. Mike is very good to me. We are on vacation at least two months of the year. Mike would always make sure that one of those vacations was just me and him. Every week, he took me somewhere new. I had no issue in being, in, in being the follower and the submissive one. I actually prefer it. Hear that, guys? Prefer it. He never placed me on the altar to be worshipped, but he, but he never treated me below him either. He was firm with me, but never yelled, and I knew where I stood with him. Again, he didn't put her up on the pedestal. Right there. He was good to her, but he wasn't kissing her ass. Never yelled, because remember guys, if you start, you get in an argument with your lady, and you start screaming and carrying on, and acting all emotional, you're acting like her. You gotta be calm, and I know it's hard sometimes. I went from working full-time to working still at home, but five, but five to ten hours a week. I was a happy stay-at-home mom, and my husband would give me small projects to work on. He pretty much wanted me to look over questionable financial documents to make sure nothing wrong is going on. Mike's business grew. His yearly income is in the seven digits. Okay, I'm not going to lie. Living such a life, of a life of such comfort was a blessing. I kind of found a sugar daddy. My grandma warned me that being married to a so-called sugar daddy places my marriage at higher risk. She explained how other women will try to lie, cheat, steal him away, and if he's not happy in their relationship, it's much greater that he, that he will leave. I would never imagine that the biggest threat would be my own sister. Enter the family member that I warn all you guys to pay attention to who your girl or wife hangs out with. Friends, family members, sisters. Now you can see this, this story here, how things all led to this. And her marriage is happy and the four kids and, and the damn a lot of money that they have in the family and all that. Hooking up all the time, which is amazing, being a married couple. And she adores this guy. And now this is where modern feminism almost destroys the family. Part six, I get infected with, wait for it, feminism. I am one in a large family. My parents had 13 children, including me. Good Lord. You're going to love this. One of my sisters, who is a nurse, was getting divorced and her husband was kicking her out. Gee, there's not a stereotype. Uh, since we live in a decently sized home, we offered to take her as, it, as she got on her feet. She and my husband got along very well. I was not worried about this yet. At this time, I had no interest in social movements or political leanings. My husband always voted Republican, and I just followed his lead on it. I never asked why or cared. Even when Orange, Orange Man was president in 2016, I didn't pay much attention. This was going to change very fast. In 2016, Amber started to turn into a hardcore feminist. Interesting that you're calling her Amber. It really bothered her that I was a stay-at-home wife. I just told her that I retired at the age of 26 when my first child was born. She always told me I wasted my life and that Mike was holding me back from my potential. How is your life being wasted given that you're absolutely in love with your husband after many years of being married? That you have four children that you love, that you have, because of him, incredible wealth, no worries in the world, he treats you well, you feel safe with him. Explain to me how that is a, a life wasted. This sounds to me that somebody is a bit envious and her marriage fell apart, so now she wants to screw up your marriage. And yes, family can be just as poisonous as any 
so-called friend or friend of me. She didn't like our roles in our marriage with him being the alpha and me following his lead. She was, however, always a princess to my husband. Let me read that again. She was, however, always a princess to my husband, always talking about how she wished she could find a man like him. And I was lucky to have him, etc. But when we were alone, she would poison the well. I noticed that she was trying to get closer to my husband. When Mike was at work, she would offer to drop him off, drop off lunch to him. She became more aggressive in her flirtations with him. I uh, think you have every, all the, every right to slap the shit out of her and say, get the fuck out of my house. Even when I am in the room, when Mike and I got alone time, he asked not to bring lunch since it gives people at work the wrong idea. Amber stayed about one month. Mike was getting really annoyed with her. He told me that she has to leave in a week. When I told Amber that she has to leave in a month, she told... Hang on. He told you she has to leave in a week. When I told Amber she had to leave in a month, she told me that he is mad at me because I won't sleep with him. There you go. He's, he's, she's saying that he's kicking her out because that she, the sister, won't sleep with him. Basically, making up a bunch of bullshit. This really hurt me and crushed me. When I asked for proof, she told me about the time that she dropped off lunch to him, but had no real proof, just her word. Flat out lies to destroy your marriage. <clears throat> I started to distance myself. I started to distance my distance myself from my husband. I would no longer be aggressive in starting the SEX. I actually believed her at this time. I started to investigate. I found nothing. I hired a PI for a few weeks and nothing. That's because there was nothing. After all these years, you're going to trust the word of her, who obviously ruined her marriage, and obviously you can see flirting with your husband and all these things over your husband has given you no reason to doubt him. What the fuck? I am so embarrassed and mad that I somehow allowed her to get in my head. She recommended that I listen to certain people on TikTok. Oh yes, because the most wise and learned people are on TikTok. To get more information, so I did. It was about signs of cheating, how to manipulate, and even about how to talk to your man about an open marriage. No, I never asked for one. If I ever brought up an open marriage, I know Mike would end it with me on the spot. I was slowly turning into a feminist. I was always on, very hands-on and am usually the one to initiate the SEX. I sat in his lap every night, always cuddling, and I would always greet him when he got off work. I stopped doing that. We went from daily SEX to about twice a month. This went on for about five to six months. He asked me what was wrong, but I was just angry for no reason and could not explain it to him. Well, you sound like a typical modern feminist. In April 2020, he told me to have a seat. We need to talk. Usually when he says this, and ha I sit on his lap. This will be the first time I did it, and I sat on the chair instead. So things are not going well. And from the perspective of Mike... My needs aren't being met. She's changed. And look where it all came from. The sister. This is a point that a guy like him would be like, there's going to be some serious changes or we're done. We got into the biggest argument we ever had. I blamed him for cheating based on the word of my sister and gaslighted him. He sat there and said nothing. I said a lot of things that made no sense that I'm ashamed of. I'm usually very logical and calm, but I was a typical crazy female. He convinced me he was not cheating. He told me it was Amber trying to put the moves on him. That is why she always wanted to bring me lunch to be with him when I was not present. That, uh, that is why he wanted her to leave because he was not comfortable with her. I thought about that and was not sure who to believe. Now, sure, when a family member is telling you one thing, that is difficult. However, given what she described about her sister, why the fuck would you trust her? And it doesn't take a genius to connect the dots on her motives. But it takes a certain understanding of human nature that even family can be ugly as hell, envious, and try to poison things, as she described poisoning the well. From that, we, from that, we moved on to sex. I told him he just used me for sex. Oh, for goodness sake. If he was just... If, he, if it was just about sex, he wouldn't have been. He wouldn't have gotten together with you. He would have many women on the side. And he was lucky that he gets monthly sex. Lucky? And you, re, you really actually said that? You're lucky that that guy chose you. He could have had anybody. 
I blamed him that I didn't have a career and it was his fault for holding me back. You chose to marry him. We all heard that. You made the choice. It wasn't him forcing you. This is America. They don't, they don't own women here. He said nothing. He pulled out some papers and handed them to me. I asked, what is this? He said, your severance package. I yelled, you're going to leave me because of sex? He responded, I'm going, to have, I'm going to have sex every day. If it's not with you, it will be with someone else. You can sleep in the guest bedroom. You have two weeks to figure it out. He left the living room and walked to the bedroom. Good for him. I don't blame it all. You were acting like an asshole. You were manipulated by your asshole sister. I'm glad you came to your senses, of course, but I'm being honest here. I think I zoned out for about 20 minutes before reality was kicking in. I picked my jaw up off the floor and went to the guest bedroom to think about what I was going to do. My husband basically placed me on a performance improvement plan. I'm researching online how to fix my marriage. I had to stop listening to women giving advice. <laughs> well, what I tell you? Don't take advice, relationship advice, or any of that stuff from women. They mostly just talk about how to manipulate and how to get control in your relationship and get your husband to eat out of the palm of your hand, which I knew my husband would never go for. You're damn right. He wasn't that way 20 years earlier, and he sure as hell ain't going to do that now. So I looked into men giving advice. Part 7, Curing My Cancer. Huh. Now, who did she find to give advice? This is when I discovered your channel and some others. I spent about a week diving into the rabbit hole relationships, feminism, and politics. I now have a daily list of people I listen to for those topics. And listening to your stories is a daily routine for me when I'm working out. Well, I appreciate you listening to my channel, and I'm glad it is obviously has helped, as we're going to get more into. Listening to this made me understand that men do need to look out on who they're hanging out with. However, the woman needs to pick her friends and family she gets close to as well. I allow, my, I allow myself to get this cancer. So about 10 days later, I asked if, we, if I could sit. He motioned towards his lap, and I sat. I handed him the papers back and explained it was my fault and that I allowed my sister to influence me. I want to go back to the way it was. I told him I'm not being oppressed and I'm not the victim. I'm sorry that I somehow believe that. I'm glad you said that to him. I'm sure you said a hell of a lot more than what you've written here. Yeah. He asked me for my phone, so I gave it to him. We have an open phone policy. <clears throat> he deleted my TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. He blocked Amber and said I'm not allowed to speak with her. He told me I was not allowed to have any social media presence. I responded, how am I going to keep in touch with my friends and family? He said, call or text them. You want me to call all 12 siblings? He reminded me it's 11 now, and if I was not willing to call or text, they are not my friends or family. Uh, for reference, my husband does not have any social media and refuses to be a part of it. His business is on Facebook with no pictures of him or reference that he is the owner. I don't blame your husband a bit. You are lucky, after all that bullshit you pulled, that he's given you the second chance. You really are. And uh, I don't blame at all for saying the social media is done. And I would certainly make sure you never go back on that again. I wouldn't mess with him. And I don't blame at all. I don't do social media anymore. Actually, that's not true. I have a personal account on Instagram with maybe one or two pictures of me in there and just family and stuff like that. But even then, I've considered getting rid of. I've been off Facebook for two and a half years. It's fucking garbage. It started off as something positive and just went to hell in a handbasket. And y'all know what I'm talking about. I accepted the terms and the contracts were updated that no social media presence is allowed. However, thankfully, he did not delete YouTube and made no mention of it. Since then, I have been off social media and honestly, I'm happier for it. There you go. I've never had better relationships with my brothers and sisters because I spend more time talking to them on the phone and in person than on social media. Hope Mark Zuckerberg doesn't hear this. He'll shit his brick. Shit a brick. Uh, things went back to normal pretty quickly. Our sex life went right back to daily. I was no longer resentful and had a greater appreciation for the hardships he faced at work that I'm shielded from. He is getting close to retirement, which I'm very excited about. He could have, he could have retired 10 years ago, but refuses, saying he loves working. Amen. I totally get it. I do very well, gentlemen, and I've built quite an nest egg. And I guarantee you, unless something happens, I'll keep doing this or something until I'm an old and gray. Because when you find something you love and you're proud of, like her husband here, why would you stop? 
He says, uh, thankfully, he has the business established enough that he only needs to work three days a week. I'm grateful that I get more time with him. A special thank you to you, SSM, and other channels RPing men and women. I truly believe this, is the, this, this way of thinking is good for men and women establishing better relationships. Uh, I better understand that, that by allowing him to be the dominant and me being a follower really increases my level of attraction to him. I'm going to read that again, guys, in case maybe you were dozing off. It says here, I better understand by allowing him to be the dominant and me being a follower really increases my level of attraction for him. This is why when guys act weak and unsure and amongst the many other things, it turns women off. When I was trying to fight him for the leadership role of the relationship, I would often find him less attractive. I went further and wanted to give tips for men for attracting better females and keeping them, I, if you feel this is worthy. Now, she's going to list a bunch of tips and suggestions to attract women. Now, I say all the time, do not take dating, relationship, pick up advice from women. However, because this gal has been watching my channel and other channels, she's clearly getting, from the guy's perspective, and obviously, um, I can't think of the word, but basically saying, yeah, that's actually, from a woman's perspective, yeah, that's accurate. So here's her thing, and this will sound very familiar. Tips for getting better females. Number one, grind, grind, grind. Nothing attracts me, and I'm sure other women, to a man with purpose and on a grind. Probably just as attracted to us as a 10 out of 10 females to guys. Yes, it's called masculine energy. Women like God. masculine energy is, is ambition and going after what you want to and conquering and all that. Most guys don't do that. Most guys do just enough to get by. So an ambitious man is the epitome of masculine energy and, go, and he's fearless going what he wants and making a change, making a difference. That's very attractive and that's what she says. Number two. Be on your plan. Have a plan what you're going, you're grinding towards and what you want out of it. Money, early retirement, etc. Number three, never place us women as the center of your world. How many times have I said that one, gentlemen? No, you're you and your goals and your ambitions as the center of your world, not her. If she treats you well, treat her well, but she ain't at the top. Right here. Number four, a lot of women are evil creatures that want to extract as many resources from you with the least amount of work. I have seen so many women not have the success of their husband as a priority, but will take from him and try and replace him. I wish more women understood that her husband's success is their success. Now she says, what is with the goddamn sirens today? Uh, now she says, tips for health for keeping high attraction for the guys. Number one, stay on your grind. Don't allow any girl to disrupt that. Again, Grind, grind, and purpose. Don't let any girl to get in the way of your purpose. Number two, don't get lazy after you've been together so often. Don't don't get don't get lazy after you've been together so often. Men have gotten lazy. They stop working out. She says my husband doesn't have the six pack he used to. He's 58 years old now, but is still in great shape. Number three, don't stop dating your girl. She says we still date randomly a few times a month. He tells me the day and time. And he recommends what clothes to wear for the date. He refuses to tell me what we were doing and we are go where we are going. But they are always fun and I enjoy the adventure. So I'll go backtrack. Don't stop taking care of yourself. A lot of people they get together, men and women, both ways, and they start letting themselves go. If they both were active in the gym and kept themselves looking good, not pro bodybuilder good, but looking fit and good, and they start slacking. Don't ever stop that. And also if you're married. And women need to keep their asses at the gym and keep their asses in shape just as much as men. And she says, don't stop dating your girl, again, for your relationship, guys. She says, even though they've been married forever, he still plans date, tells her what to wear, keeps it a surprise where they're going. These are qualities that will keep women interested, again, for your relationship, guys. And I agree with this. Number four, keep flirting and building sexual tension. Mike is the biggest flirt with me, and I don't know how, but I usually want to jump him almost every day. He is so playful and a huge tease. Yes, joke around, be playful, have fun. Uh, even my best friends noticed it. My sister Lisa, one time at a Christmas party, my sister Lisa asked me when was the last time we had the SEX. I could not believe it and, uh, and, told, and told me that I looked like I was going to F him as soon as they left. I said, I am, I am, so, when, I am so when you were leaving. Yeah, he flirts with her, keeps it fun and 
They're hooking up left and right. I'm amazed that these two, from what she describes, hook up as often as they do. How many married couples, beyond having beyond a few years of marriage or a bunch of kids, hook up all the time? It's fucking rare. And this lady almost destroyed her marriage because of her sister and feminism. You got really lucky, honey, that he gave you a second chance here. Number five, the bedroom setup. Sleep naked. For, for real, me and my husband have been sleeping naked every day for about 20 years, never going to stop. This leads to more SEX and me wanting to be in his arms every night. She says, no cell phones or TV. We have no TV in our room, and when you enter the room, there is a basket for keys and cell phones. I really see our bedroom as my escape from my kids and other life issues. So I get one-on-one time, one -on -one time with my man. She says, number six, never ask or beg for sex, just take it. Well, nobody in their right mind is going to beg for sex and certainly not ask. Let's just say, gentlemen, when I'm in relationships, I don't ask. I just, well, it's kind of unspoken. Things happen. She says here, if your girl says stop, please stop. B, but as an example, and sometimes when I'm doing some house stuff, Mike will throw me over his shoulder and say something like, caveman see hot woman, caveman will fuck hot woman. I need to hear that, but I get your point. I know some girls don't like this, but I find it funny and love that he desires me like this. She says, uh, we understand that it's my primal turn-on to be provided for, and it has his turn-on to be to provide for me, and it's sexy. So we both do things that really try and tap into the caveman, cavewoman mindset. I'm not sure if this is a, I'm not sure there is a ton more tips I could add, but this is getting really long. She says, P.S. It later came out the husband of Amber her sister, caught her cheating with a co-worker. She was cheating for about six months. And I am sure that Amber was the one trying to make me resent my husband and trying to, to wedge herself between us. Thank you for all your work, SSM, and, and curing me from the plague that is far more hurtful to society than COVID could ever be. Well, there you go, guys. 41 minutes and counting here. I can see the clock right here. That was a great story. And a perfect example of the damage, A, a jealous, envious female family member friend could cause into a great marriage and the effect that feminism does right there from a woman telling me that so guys you got the whole story there how she saw a guy she liked made her freaking crazy because he wasn't chasing after her she obviously saw he was a prize for multiple reasons was attracted by his strong dominant alpha nature as i tell you guys to be he handled like a boss. I'm not marrying you. I'll marry for sure, but we're not legally getting married. Marriage contract. They have a great SEX life. They have fun together. He takes care of himself physically. He leads the relationship. All these things for your relationship guys to like. And her, what happened when she felt got susceptible to freaking a wacko family member who's jealous and envious and also feminism. And again, like I said... She, I mean, I'm speaking to you, honey, who wrote this in. You were acting like an asshole, and I'm, I'm glad it worked out. But, man, you got lucky he gave you a second chance. And don't ever let that get messed up again, and I don't think you will. So, guys, lots of things to learn from the story. And, of course, feminism doesn't work. It only causes turmoil. And, again, like I have said before the other day, have you ever encountered a happy feminist? No. They just want, they're pissed off all the time. Everything's an injustice, and they want to tear apart. Anybody else is happy. They want to tear that apart, finding out all the, picking out all the injustices that that woman's dealing with in her relationship, amongst many other things. Cut them out of your life. Well, honey, I wish you the best. It's a great story. It's a long one, but, you know, I'm getting pretty used to doing these long videos. And I always learn something from my videos. I wish you the best. Keep taking care of your husband. You take care of each other. And I wish you the best. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me just think about this. Let her know what you think. Uh, give her some credit because she definitely takes guts to write in a story here, especially from a woman. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.